Welcome everyone. My name is Jinpal and I am working in BMC customer support organization from past three years supporting two side server automation. In this webinar, I will explain you about setting up high availability for TSSC file servers using network attached storage, which we call it as NAS. If you have Windows app servers, please note that this will not work in Windows environment. This will only work with Unix Linux app servers environment. In a multi-node application server environment with an existing highly available network attached storage already in place, the easier way to implement high availability on the file server is to add the file server to the NAS solution. Well, we have the agenda for today's webinar. I will walk you through on how to install two RSD agents on a single host. Next, setting up high availability for the existing Linux based environment using NAS solution, a demo. I will also discuss about the issues, precautions we need to take care before upgrading the environment in future when you have two RSD installed on a single app server host. So here we go. You can implement a highly available two side server automation file server by using either of the following methods. The first one is network attached storage. Second one is application clustering. Application clustering option is for implementing a highly available file server is to use an application clustering solution such as Veritas cluster server. The details of the installation are specific to the chosen software solution. However, in this webinar, we will be discussing about the NAS solution only. Let's move on to the next slide to discuss about the installation configuration of the RSD agent. In this diagram, this describes the concept of configuring two agents on a single host. Note that the application server does not require an agent, while the file server does. The application server agent is used for the management of the application server. By default, an application server does not need an agent to run. The application server needs to connect to a file server, which needs an agent to run. For the file server to function correctly, all users must have the same permissions to the file server storage directory. All users need write access to the file server in the same manner. By installing separate agents for the file server OS and the file server storage, you can configure them in a way that is secure while also allowing the application server to be managed within the console. Let's move on to the next topic, installation configuration of second RSD agent. For this section on installation, the second RSD agent, let's move on to the documentation and I will start the demo. Before we start the installation, let's go through the assumptions and prerequisites. As this will only work on Unix operating system, so we are assuming that you are running this on a Unix operating system. The file server should have two valid IP addresses. One is reserved for the file server agent and other one is reserved for the normal server management agent. Let's prepare for the installation. We need to first add a second IP address to the machine. To implement this, first run ipconfig-a to list all the devices. Here you can see the output. I have two IP addresses. In your case, there can be multiple interfaces available, so make sure you find the correct interface to use it. It will help to know the correct network that you want this traffic to pass over. Let's create the logical interface and assign a new IP address to the device. I am working on SUSE operating system, so I will modify the ifcfg ipconfig file and add this logical interface details. So I have already added these details, so you can look at the documentation as well. Save this file. Once the interface is up, we can check by pinging to the secondary IP address if that is bugging or not. So let's try to ping to the secondary IP address. I can see the ping is working now. We can also check the broadcast address and net mask using the if config command. So here we can see that the, we have successfully added the secondary IP address for the file server. With this, we have completed the prerequisites now. Moving on to the next step, we will work on how to configure the management agent, which is the first RSD agent. Let's go to the documentation. The first task to configure the management agent is to stop the app server agent. Secondly, 
modify the secure file and add the management interface IP address or host name. And once we do this, start the app server agent and validate using agent info command. Let's move on to the demo part. First, we will stop the RSD agent. Once the agent is stopped, let's edit the secure file and we will be adding the management interface host name in the secure file. Edit, add the host name, host is equal to host name and save this file. Once we save it, start the RSD agent of the management interface. Start it successfully. Let's validate using agent info command. So we can see that agent info is working now. Our next section is to installing the file server agent. We will go through each steps and install the agent on the file server. You can keep this documentation handy just for the reference purpose. So now we are installing the secondary agent on the file server. We need to stop the first RSD agent before installing the second agent, which is app server RSD. So here I'm stopping it. Yeah, once the agent is stopped, so we will be starting the local agent installation by passing the hyphen local option. This agent will manage the file server connections. Please note that do not install the agent under the existing installation path. For example, OPT, BMC, Blade Logic, NSH. Instead, choose a different path outside of the Blade Logic directory. So you can choose OPT BMC slash RCD FS. Do not choose to set up any agent mappings during the installation of this RSD agent. Once the installation is completed, stop the RSD service for the new agent. I am now starting the installation of this RSD. Select the component RSD. Start the installation. Let's skip to the last part. Okay, so here we can see the installation is completed successfully. Now the installation is completed, I will stop the RSD agent for the configuration part. Let's stop the RSD agent. Yeah, we have stopped this new RSD agent. I'm making sure using the ps command that the agent is not running. Also, you can copy and link the local init script into the init.d directory to start and stop the agent. Once we do this, we need to edit the secure file and add the secondary IP address as a host and change the port to a different one. I have made the secondary port to 4751. Let's edit the secure file. Add the host is equal to host name. So host name would be our secondary IP address. Once you add this, Let's save this file and start both the RCD agents. Let's clear the screen and I will start the application server RCD agent first, followed by file server RCD agent. Once you start this, just make sure using ps command if the both agents are running fine. Yes, command to just validate. Yes, we can see both agents are running fine. So let's move on to the next topic. As we want to configure the second agent to be used as a file server, let's configure by creating a new OS user. This user can have a locked password. Also, you can check the steps to create this user in the documentation as well. I'm creating this new user by using user add command. Let's validate this if we have created it. Yeah, we can see this user BLFS user has been created successfully. Let's modify the RSC file for universal file server access. Edit the exports file. 
for the second RSD agent and grant read-write permission to the newly created BLFS user to app servers. Add the application server hostname space rw comma user is equal to BLFS user. The second entry would be the full domain name of the application server space rw comma user is equal to BLFS user. So rw here is read-write permissions. Once we are done with this, save this file and we are, need to also make sure that the users and users.local files are blank. So let's check this out. cat users file post that is empty. cat for the users.local we can see this is also empty. So the last step of the installation is to grant the ownership on the storage directory to the BLFS user. So here I am assuming that uh, my storage directory is on the OPT BMC Blade Logic storage. So I am granting the permission. So here with this we have completed the installation process. The next step is to make the file servers highly available. Let's move on to the documentation. In this step we will see how to implement the highly available file server. As I described earlier, we are implementing a highly available TSSA file server by using NAS solution only. So first, we need to set the alias in etc host for the file server. So we will set the name as BLFS so that we can have a unique name for the file server. Let's go to the demo part. Let's edit the etc host file on the app server and add BLFS so that it can be resolved with the name of BLFS. Yes, let's save this file. Now each application server network mounts the network available file system in read write mode. So here you can see my mount point is already set is slash mnt slash file server. So let's try to set this path for the file server location. The location of the network mount is the same across all the application server to ensure a uniform application server configuration. So I am setting this file location to mount slash file server. Let's set the name as well. we need to set the same name on all application servers for the file server. So I have set the alias as BLFS on all application server. So I am setting this file server name as BLFS. Once this is completed, we need to restart the application server. So let's restart the application server. It has started. With this, we have completed the demo on how to configure two RSD agents on a single host and implementation of high availability for the file servers using NAS storage. Now let's discuss about the troubleshooting scenarios. The common problem when someone accidentally pushes ACL to the file server, the jobs fail on random servers executed by a certain application server. So you need to make sure while configuring ACLs, ACL should never be pushed to the file server. Doing this, it will cause various problems and in addition to prevent the application server from caching, you can set up an ACL job and exclude the file server target from the job. Also, please keep in mind that for example, if there are any jobs running on X application server and the RSD agent running on the file server stops suddenly or not reachable, then the jobs running on that particular app server gets failed. However, the next execution of the job will pick up the active application server automatically and due to we have configured high availability NAS storage for the file server, it will pick up the active app server file server and the job will proceed to run. Now coming back to the second point, how to upgrade such environments as the second RSD agent on the application server is not upgraded automatically and you must do it manually. So for this demo, 
I have upgraded my existing environment from 22.2 to 23.1. So here we can see my application is upgraded now to 23.1. Also my application service RSD is also upgraded to 23.1. However, the file server RSD agent is not upgraded. So we need to, we need to do this manually. So let's check on the server first. I will try to do the agent info application server hostname. Here I can see my application service RSD is upgraded now. But if I do agent info for the VLFS, it shows the older version. In this scenario, I have to upgrade the second RSD of the file server manually. Let's try to upgrade the second RSD. So here I have the installer available and I have started the upgrade for the second RSD. So here make sure you provide the existing path which is for the file server RSD installation location. Let's proceed with the upgrade. Once the upgrade of the RSLD agent is completed, you can check the version of the file server RSLD agent using agent info command. So agent info BLFS, it shows now it has upgraded to 23.1. So here I will leave you with a quick review of what we have covered. We have covered the installation of two RSLD agents on a single host creating high availability setup for existing Linux based environment NAS solution. So we discussed about the issues precautions while upgrading the TSSA environment in future. And finally, we discussed about how to upgrade the file server RSD agent manually in the application upgraded to the next version. I hope you have found this webinar useful. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a nice day.